And so if you have your Bibles, let's open them up to Matthew chapter 13. Hopefully we can bring this to a conclusion on the mysteries, the parable of the mysteries. And these are very significant in your Bible um, to, to the point where if you don't understand Matthew chapter 13 and the mysteries, you will never understand the Bible on how it put, it's put together. You will never understand it. If you misinterpret these parables, if you misapproach these parables, or you misapply these parables, you are completely lost in the Word of God. Matthew chapter 13 is one of the most significant chapters in the entire Bible in the concept of understanding the Word of God. So you have to understand Matthew chapter 13 if you're ever going to be able to sort these things out in the Word of God. And so we, when we come to the Word of God, we know that there are certain books that are more important than other books in the Bible, in understanding the Bible. So we look at the book of Matthew, one of the most significant books in the entire Word of God. And Matthew was written to the who? Jew. To the Jews. Okay, so it's a very important book because it shows us the transition of the gospel of the kingdom to the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection, which most people don't even understand. And it's very sad. But it's primarily showing us the gospel of the kingdom and then when you get to Matthew chapter 13 it's showing us that it's no longer the gospel of the kingdom now it becomes the gospel of the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that's why we see and it says in the same day Jesus went out of the what house. he went out of the house well what was the house it was the house of Israel now the message is being preached in parables now the message is going to the Gentiles and now the message is literally being hid from the Jews and what did God give the Jews a what a veil, it talks about that in Romans chapter 11, was in blindness was imparted to the nation of Israel, to the Jews. That's what God did. God blinded his people. Why would God do that? So the fullness of the Gentiles could what? Come in. You see? And if you don't understand that process in the word of God, you're going to get lost throughout the entire Bible. And this is one of the things that we, we struggle with. So obviously we have certain books that are very significant. The book of Genesis. It lays out the entire Bible in the first 12 chapters of Genesis and then by the time you get to Genesis and you look at the book of Job it unlocks the entire word of God Matthew opens up the gospel to us of the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and then the book of Acts we talk about this we've done a, I did a series in the book of Acts you get to get your what together you've got to get your acts together because if you don't understand dispensationalism and you don't rightly divide the word of truth and you don't understand that these are transitional books you're going to get completely lost studying the word of God. And this is what happens. So let's look at this, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And so we are we're solving the mysteries of the kingdom, okay? And so you and I, what we've done is with this particular study, this series, we've taken an approach of that of a detective or that of a lawyer. And our responsibility is as a detective or as a lawyer, and we have to solve the what? We have to solve the mystery. Okay, a mystery is something, once again, that was hid in the Old Testament and it was revealed in the New Testament. Okay, so there are mysteries in the Word of God that you and I have to go through the Word of God and we have to gather our information, we have to gather our clues, so to say. So why? So we can solve the mysteries. Okay, that's why we're taking this particular approach. And here we are, we're doing our research, we're doing our cross-examination, we're doing, we're taking the word of God and we're approaching it and saying, how can we solve these mysteries? Okay, so look at Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. All right, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Now, remember what's happening here, okay? Jesus is speaking to who? He's speaking to the Gentiles, he's speaking to the Jews, he's speaking to all of these different people. Now, uh, the, one of the first um, mysteries that we looked at, one of the first parables that we talked about, it was talking about the sower and the what? The seed. You guys remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, guys, listen to me, right? There's, so every time I've looked at that, something, uh, a fear comes over me. Mm -hmm. I get horrified. Because I question... From Matthew, Gospel, chapter 13, down 1 through 10, I question who was really saved and who was really not saved. Mm -hmm. You see, now remember, we talked about four conditions of people's hearts. The first one gets sown, and what, is the, what does it do? And then the birds come, they eat it. What are the birds? The devil, and they come and watch. Snatch. Snatch that which was sown in the heart. <laughs> no salvation. Then the next one, they come, they receive the word with joy, and on and on receiveth it, but it says they have no what? No root, and Jesus is the root. 
there's no salvation. Mm -hmm. Then the next one, it says they get caught up in the thorns, the cares, and the riches, and the pleasures of this life, and then what? And it chokes them, and they become unfruitful. Now, some people would question, oh, that, is that one saved? Listen, there's been great Bible teachers and preachers that teach it on both sides, mm -hmm. that they're not even saved. Then the last one was the one that fell in good ground. And what did it do? It brings forth what? Much it brings much. forth much fruit. It brings forth substance. This substance is something tangible in their life to prove that they've truly been born again by the Spirit of God. It proves that they've been literally anointed with the Spirit of God. Why? Is that they have substance in their life. They have fruit. Something that is tangible. Something that you can see. They have evidence of their faith in their life. Amen. They've won people to the Lord. They've discipled people. There's a, there's a spiritual activity that takes place in their life. Why? It's because they're abiding in Christ. Jesus says, if you abide in me and I abide in you, the same shall bring forth what? Much fruit. Much fruit. So some of us may have even said a little prayer. And by the time you said that prayer and walked out that door, the devil snatched that which was sown in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's a scary thought because you have to look at not just the not just the results of what happened at the moment, but we have to what examine the fruit as it goes down the line. When somebody gets saved, they want to learn, they want to know, they want to understand the word of God. As a newborn babe desires the sincere milk of the word that they may what that they may grow thereby. The Bible says, "Examine yourself, prove your own self. Know ye not your own selves, whether you be a what a reprobate. A reprobate is somebody that made a profession." but never was truly born again by the Spirit of God. So these are things we have to think about, okay? So let's look at this, right? In Matthew chapter 13, we're going to solving the mysteries of the kingdom. Let's look at Jesus says in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. Now we want to determine, I want to show you why these mysteries have to be solved, okay? And you and I as detectives or a lawyer, we have to take the right approach and we have to find the right clues from Scripture. We have to find the right verses and we have to compare Scripture with Scripture so we can come to a conclusion of this mystery. You and I have to learn how to solve the mysteries. Some people like mystery movies where they're always guessing who did it, what happened, what happened. Well, we have a mystery that is right in front of us, and it's the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And there are a lot of people who don't even understand what these mysteries are, mm -hmm. never mind how to approach them. So let's look at this. Matthew chapter 13, verse 11, right? Now watch this, right? And he answered and said unto them, the disciples came to Jesus, and they said, Lord, Master, why speakest thou to them in parables? Now, the disciples didn't understand this. They were like, why is he talking in this parable form? Why is he speaking in this mystery form? Now, the false teaching of a parable is what? Somebody tell me. It's a what? It's an earthly truth, all right, that has like a heavenly stupid meaning, which is completely wrong, all right? That is what is being taught, right? Now, but watch what Jesus says. Okay, so they ask him in verse 10, why speakest thou to them in parables? And then in verse 11, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, say it out loud, it is what? It's not given. Clearly, Jesus says, to them it is not given. Okay, now look what he says in verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given... And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore I speak unto them in parables, because look at this. Because seeing, look at this, they are, because they see, seeing but see not, and hearing, they hear, but neither do they what? Understand. Now turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. Look at Luke, chapter 8. This is so important that you understand this, because these parables are mysteries to the average person. Even the average Christian has no idea of the parables of the kingdom, of the mysteries. And listen, if you don't understand the mysteries, how can you understand even the mystery of your salvation? Amen. Which is a mystery. Guys, remember, there are seven distinct mysteries in the Bible, right? Yep. Christ in you. It's one of the mysteries. Christ in you. 
So we have to learn to understand these things. The Bible says that we're stewards over the mysteries of God. And it says as a steward, you are required to be found faithful in knowing and understanding the concept of these mysteries. Why? It's because there are people in this world who don't know the truth and the mystery has never been revealed to them. And it's our responsibility to make sure they see and understand and they comprehend the mysteries. Or they'll die and go to hell <coughs> without the understanding and the knowledge of the mysteries. One of the mysteries was Christ manifest in the flesh. Let's look at this, right? So Luke chapter 8, verse 9. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? Well, tell us, interpret this parable. Mm -hmm. Now he says in verse 10, and he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others... Look at this in let's look at this, but to others in parables, why? That seeing they say it out loud, might not see, seeing and hearing they what? Now, guys, let me sum this up. Jesus says, I'm speaking in a parable to hide the truth from certain people. He said, Why would he do that? Why would Jesus want to hide the truth? Because the people didn't want the truth. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says, okay, if they don't want the truth, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you a lie to believe a lie. Mm -hmm. Now, I know some Christians are like, Pastor Mike, I never knew God would do such a thing. Let me show you some scriptures. Stay with me. Turn to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 29. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 29. Isaiah chapter 6, I'm sorry, verse 9. Isaiah 6, verse 9. Now watch this. And he said, go ye and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. Now watch this. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Now watch this. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. And look what it says. And what? Shut their eyes. eyes, least they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart. And look at this. And look at this, right? And cover and cover, right? And be healed. You know what God did? God blinded these people's minds. Mm -hmm. When they don't want the truth, God will blind you from receiving the truth. You say, Pastor Mike, would that happen in the life of a Christian? 100%. Mm -hmm. God will blind you from the authority of that King James Bible. God will blind you from seeing and progressing in Bible knowledge. God will blind you to the point where you will never even understand the mysteries of the kingdom, mm -hmm. even as a child of God. Look at Isaiah 29. Go to Isaiah 29, verse 9. Isaiah 29, verse 9. Look at this. Look how this is worded. Stay yourselves, wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. Mm -hmm. Now look at this. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of what? <laughs> you see that? You know what God did? God says, I'm going to put you guys all to sleep. You say, what do you mean? God says, I poured upon them the spirit of deep sleep. Well, why would God do that? You know when you fall asleep, you don't understand anything. You know, you ever tried reading your Bible and you're dozing off and you're like, what did I just read? And you don't even know what you just read. Let me tell you something, right? God took his people and he poured out a, a spirit of deep sleep upon them so they couldn't see, they couldn't understand, they couldn't comprehend, nor could they hear the word of God. Now watch this. For the Lord hath poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has clothed your eyes. Look at this. The prophets and the rulers, the prophets and the rulers, the seers, the one who has seen into the visions of God, hath he what? Do you guys get that? God covered their eyes, the prophets, the rulers, and the seers. He's covered their eyes, and God himself kept them from seeing the truth. Now look at this. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is what? Sealed. That is sealed. You see that? This old Bible, that thing is sealed. You can't see it. You can't understand it. You can't approach it. Those mysteries will be hid from you. Bible doctrine will be hid from you. <coughs> Look at this, right? And the vision of all has become unto you of words that are book that is sealed, which men deliver to want our uh, one to, uh, to learn, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. 
For it is what? Sealed. 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 A lot of pastors in this world don't know anything about the Bible. Mm. They don't know anything about the Word of God. That book has been sealed to them. Even what I'm teaching you right now, they never even heard these things. They've never even heard it. I've had people come in our church who've been saved for years, and they've come up to me and said, Pastor Mike, I've never heard that. They've never heard it. Because the book has been sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. I don't know how to solve these mysteries. Look at Isaiah 44. Look at this one, Isaiah 44, verse 18. Isaiah 44, verse 18. Now watch this, Isaiah 44, verse 18. Look at this. They have not known nor understood. Look at this, for he has shut their what? Eyes. eyes. God has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they cannot what? Understand. You see that? Now look at this one. Go to 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11, right? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them a what? Strong, Strong what? Delusion. What do you mean? God is going to send a delusion? Yes, God himself, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that is all sovereign all over this creation, the one who spoke this world into existence, he is going to send a strong delusion. You say, Pastor Mike, why would God do that? That the people might believe a lie. Throughout the whole Old Testament, when the people didn't want the truth, we know this. God rose up the false prophets. God put a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets to tell the people what they wanted to hear because the people didn't want to hear the truth. This is one of the major things that is sweeping across our world and our society and our country is that people don't want the truth and God put a lying spirit in the mouth of those prophets. He's given them corrupt Bibles. He's given them lying preachers and teachers that literally will tickle their ears and they will turn away their ears from the truth and will be turned to what? Fables. Teachers having itching ears. God has sent a strong delusion. We're living in a society today where God has closed the, closed the eyes of people where they can't see. God has sent a strong delusion. Now let's turn back to Matthew chapter 13. Let's dive into this parable that we need to understand. Okay? Now let's look at this. Now, once again, this is a, there's so many corrupt teachings behind this. I'm not going to go into all the false teachings that are behind this specific parable, okay? But there are so many false teachings. So look at this, Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto, like unto treasure hid in the field. The which a man hath found, he, the man, hideth, and for joy there, thereof goeth and sell all that he hath, and buyeth that field. There are people that teach that the field is salvation. And that when you get saved, you're going to sell everything and, and, and receive your salvation. I'm not going to go into all the corrupt teachings because I want I don't care what the corrupt teachings is. What I want to do is I want to solve this mystery of the kingdom. So my approach in solving the mystery is to gather all the information and to gather the what? To gather the clues, right? Yes. Isn't, wouldn't that be right? If you're looking at something, you're trying to solve something, you're trying to come to a conclusion of a mystery, what do you want to do? You want to gather all the information, you want to look at all the clues, you want to put it all together so you can solve this mystery. So let's see how this is. So let's deal with the treasure first of all. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto what? Treasure. treasure. Let's deal with this issue of the treasure. And how do we do that? Clue number one. Turn to Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Clue number one. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar, what? Treasure, treasure unto me. All, look at this. Above all people, for all the earth is mine. So who is God speaking to historically and in the context? He's speaking to who? The nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is the treasure. Does everyone agree with that? Okay, you can disagree, but you can leave church if you like. Listen, you want the treasure. 
You want the treasure. We're dealing with the nation of Israel is the treasure at this moment and at this time. Look at this. Go to Psalm chapter 135 and verse 4. Psalm chapter 135 and verse 4. Now look at this. The Lord has chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar what? Treasure. Treasure. Nothing like a King James Bible to sort out these mysteries. Amen. Right? Amen. I'll tell you right now, we wouldn't deal with anything else. Amen. You know, we're going clue by clue. Mm -hmm. Right? That was that was uh that was um number two, clue number two. Let's look at clue number three. Go to Malachi chapter three and verse seventeen. Malachi chapter three and verse seventeen. Most preachers who go to the church, they don't even know what they're doing with these mysteries. They don't know how to compare scripture with scripture, and therefore they get lost and they could never possibly solve the mystery. Malachi chapter 3, verse 17. And look at this. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, Israel, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man that spareth his own son that serveth him. Okay. Now, stay with me, okay? Go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7. So God says that they're his treasure, and then there he says they're his what? Jewels. Okay, stay with me. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a, look at this, special people unto himself, the nation of Israel, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You see that? Yeah. You say, Pastor Mike, is God racist? Yes, he is. Amen. It's not about black power. It's not about white, black lives matter. This life, listen, it's about Jew power. That's right. Amen. God is concerned about his people, his chosen and elect. The Bible says, Israel is mine elect. The Lord did not send his love upon you, nor choose you, verse 7, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because, look at this, the Lord loved you, because he would keep you, keep the oath which he hath sworn unto your fathers, all the way back what we just looked at, and the promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Had the Lord brought you out of out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen uh, and from the hand of the uh, uh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Okay. So we just determined that the treasure, without any shadow of a doubt, from each clue that we looked at, the treasure is what? The Jews. It's the nation of Israel. Okay? So now, let's talk about this concept. The field is the world. Okay? All right? Now, if you go back there to Matthew chapter 13, verse 38, all right, we know that the field is the world. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 38. Okay? But I want you to turn to the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. And I want you to see how this works because this is very important that you do understand this. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15. It says, The seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voices, the voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms, plural, of this world are become the kingdoms, plural, of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now, let me explain this to you, because some of you may not understand this, right? When Adam and Eve were in the garden, they sinned and rebelled against God. What they did is they forfeited their rule and reign in this earth, and they handed it over to the devil himself. Mm -hmm. That's why Satan is called the God of this world, mm -hmm. who blinds the minds of them which believe not. That's why in Matthew chapter 4, Satan took Jesus Christ up to the pinnacle of the world, and he says, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world if you bow down and worship me. And Jesus says, no. no way. Because right now, Satan is the God of this world. Amen. He's the God of this world. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of Job that he goes to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. That's why there's so much hurt. That's why there's so much confusion. That's why there's so much pain. That's why there's so much division. That's why there's so much sickness. That's why there's so many problems. That's why we see all the mess that this world did is because Satan is the God of this world, small g. But one day the kingdoms will be given back to Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Now, let's talk about the hid face. This is important that we do understand this, okay? So back there, we talked about the he, the man, was the one who what? hid his face. He didn't take the treasure and hide the treasure. What did he do? He hid himself. 
Now look at this. Turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 17. Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 17. Now watch this. And I will wait upon the Lord. Look at this. That hideth his face from the house of who? Jacob. Jacob. And look at this. And I will look for him. You say, Pastor Mike, what did God do? Now he hid his face from Israel for a moment's time because of their disobedience. How many are familiar with Romans 11? Just show me your hands. Okay, if you're not familiar with Romans 11, what did God do? He says, blindness has been imparted to the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Why? So the fullness of the Gentiles could come in. So God blinded those Jews. And what did he do? He hid his face from them. That's why Jesus is speaking in the parables at this point. To hide and to conceal the mysteries. Mm -hmm. So God is the one. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 17. Deuteronomy 31, verse 17. Deuteronomy 31, verse 17. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. And look at this. God is speaking to Israel. And I will, say it out loud, hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils, troubles shall befall them. That's why we see all of the problems that the Jew has had from the Holocaust all the way back. Because God hid his face from them. And they shall be devoured, and many evils, troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? Now, God only hid his face on them for a moment's time. Okay? God is never done with Israel. Now, turn back to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah 54. Now, watch this, right? Isaiah 54 and verse 8. In a little, look at this, in a little wrath, God's anger, I hid my, look at this, I hid my face from thee for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy redeemer. So he tells him clearly that I, I, I've done it. I've hid my face. Okay? Now we have to understand how the, does everyone see how this parable is mm -hmm. being unraveled? Do you guys see the clues now? Mm -hmm. Does it all make a little bit more sense? Now let's turn back there and look at the parable back there in Matthew again. Turn all the way back to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44. Now watch this. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a treasure, Israel, right? Hid in the field, the world, which a man hath when he hath found God himself. What did he do? He hid his face from the nation of Israel, and for joy thereof goeth, and what did he do? He sells all that he had, and buyeth that what? Field. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? What did he buy it with? Turn to Acts chapter 20. Turn to Acts chapter 20. It says that he hid, and what did he do? He bought it. He sold, he gave all he had, and what did he do? He bought it. Now, for God so loved the world that he gave his what? Does that make a little more sense to you now, guys? Does that make a little bit more sense? What did God do? God gave everything to purchase the treasure of Israel. Watch this, guys. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. It says, Take heed there, therefore, thereof, thereof, right, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has said out loud, everyone, purchase, purchase with his own blood. blood. There it is right there, guys. Amen. You see that? Mm -hmm. So what did we just do? We took a mystery. We went through all the clues. And we just solved the mystery. Don't you feel good? Amen. <laughs> now you know exactly what that whole concept is there. Now you can really process it and understand it. Now the mystery has been solved to you. Why? It's because you have eyes and can see. Mm -hmm. Some of you may be sitting there saying, Pastor Mike, none of that made a bit of sense to me. Well, the problem is, is you don't have eyes that you may see. And the God of this world has maybe blinded your eyes of them which believe not. Or the natural man receive not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, because they're foolishness of him. Okay, look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Now, now it will make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, look at Revelation 11, verse 15 again. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms 
of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. How did he purchase the kingdom of people? By his what? Blood. By his blood. Amen. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Amen. All things by the law are purged by the blood. Amen. Purged by Amen. the blood. Amen. Okay, let's turn back there to Matthew. We got time for another mystery, don't we? Yeah. Amen. I'm not that hot up here. Amen. Amen. Let's solve another one. Go back to Matthew chapter 13 and verse 45. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 45. Another mystery here. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he hath found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, the funny thing about a pearl, that every other stone is a unique stone because it's formed over millions and millions of years in the earth. When we say millions of years, you say, Pastor Mike, you believe in evolution? No, no, listen, this world is big here. You guys all know the story and how it works, okay? Does everyone understand that? Listen, the earth was what? Removed out of her place. Carbon data doesn't even work. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even work. Mm -hmm. But so we understand that diamonds and emeralds and rubies, and they're, they're stones, but a pearl is a made up stone. And it's made up by an oyster, and it's made up of an irritation in the oyster. And so the pearl is nothing more than dirt and slime that came from an irritation. Mm. That's you and me, guys. Amen. You're just a dirty slime ball. <laughs> You're just a dirty slime ball that God took something and he made it into something. He Amen. took a dirty Amen. piece of slime, Amen. like my brother George here, Amen. and he made it into something. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 That's what it is. Guys, and so, so this particular parable is relating to the church of Jesus Christ. Now look at this, right? Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Look at this. As newborn babes, the desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming is as unto, say that word out loud. A living stone. A what? Living stone. Did you guys get that? The church is a living organism. It was formed underneath the sea. Get it, get it, guys? You guys know what I'm saying? It was formed underneath the sea, and it was formed by dirt and an irritation and slime. Amen. Amen. But Jesus says, I love that pearl. Amen. And I'm going to purchase it with my blood. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to purchase it with my blood. Amen. It says, look at this. It calls us there a, a lively stone, a living stone. Disallowed indeed of men. Look at this, but chosen of God. Hated by men, but chosen of God. Look at this, and precious ye also as what? Say it aloud. Lively stones. Now that makes a lot more sense to you when you read it now, right? Mm -hmm. Are built upon spiritual house and holy priesthood. Offered up, look at this, offered up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Man, isn't that good? Amen. Amen. The church is the pearl. Amen. And it was purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's funny because you think about it. God doesn't need anything. Mm -hmm. God doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. But he chose to redeem us with his blood. Because we were precious to him. Turn to 1 Corinthians. Look at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians 3. Let's, let's lay this thing out, right? Let's look at some more clues. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. Look at this. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master buildeth, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth, how he buildeth thereon. Now watch this. For other foundation can no man lay, no uh, can, 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 uh, that man can lay, then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the rock of our salvation. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, or what? Precious stones. Precious stones. That gold is the price of your redemption. That gold represents the deity. The silver represents the price of our redemption. But notice the precious stones, which represent the people. And then it talks about wood, hay, and stone. You know what the wood, hay, and stubble is? It's everything you own. It's everything you possess. It's all wood, hay, and stubble. 
And if you have anything, if you're building something, right, you better make sure that you've got some gold, the deity of God, the price of redemption, and you better make sure you have some precious stones. Amen. And you know who the precious stones are? The people that you bring to Jesus Amen. Christ. Those are the precious stones. Those are the pearls. If you don't believe me, let's look at another clue. Go to Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 16. Now watch this, right? And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people. For they shall be as the so what? Stones, of, Stones a of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. It says that God's people are like stones to him. They're like precious stones to God. And only a stone will go through the fire. You know? Now look at Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 2. Isaiah 62 verse 2. This is awesome. Stay with this, guys. This is so good. Look at this. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2 and 3. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. Aren't you glad you've seen the righteousness of Amen. Jesus Christ? Amen. Aren't you glad that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? Aren't you glad that you've seen the righteousness of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad that you've seen all of your righteousness as what? Filthy rags. There's nothing good in any of you. Preach it. Amen. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. And they're not going to go about to establish their own righteousness. But they've submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. And all the kings of glory. Look at this. And thou shalt be called by a new name. You guys get that? We sing that song. There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. And it's mine. Amen. Which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Do you know you get a name that no one else knows but you are God? That's awesome, huh? Now watch this. Thou shalt also be a what? Crown. A crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal, say it out loud, people, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Man. Amen. God says, you are my jewels, you're my pearls, you're my stones. I love you that much that I'm willing to come to this world and shed my blood to purchase that which belongs to Satan himself. Look at Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Don't you love that? The people that feared God, what did they do, people? Speak to each other. They talked to each other. <laughs> they, right, guys? That, that, I mean, Amen. we look at that. When you love God, who do you talk to? You talk to your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Amen. They that feared the Lord, well, Lord, what did they do? They spoke, they communicated with each other. Yeah. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Notice that? The book of remembrance was written to who? The people that feared God. And that brought and that thought upon his name. They meditated on his name continually. They meditated on his word. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day, we know what that is, second coming. In that day, when I make up my what? Jewels. Jewels. And I will spare them as a man that spared his own son. So who's the man? The, the man is Jesus Christ. And what does he do? And the pearl is the church. And the precious stones are made up of nothing of slime and dirt and an irritation. Jesus Christ shed his blood to purchase you and I, the church of Jesus Christ. Look at Ephesians chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Look at this, right? In whom we have redemption through his blood. Look at this, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Peter 1.18, For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from the vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious and allowed, the blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Turn to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. Revelation 5 and verse 9. 
Revelation 5, 9, and 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take, uh, to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain and hast redeemed us, un look at this, us to God by thy what? Blood. By thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto, unto God our kings and priests and we shall say aloud, reign. reign on the earth. Amen. There it is right there, guys. Let's turn back to Matthew now. Is everyone with me on this? Amen. I mean, we could stop here. Should we go on? Yes. Some of you are a little weak in that. Amen. Who's on overload? Some of you are like, Pastor Mike, I'm way on overload. <laughs> we, we can cover the rest next week. We can cover that next week. We can definitely, we'll do the rest next week. We'll do, it'll be the last one. But if you missed everything I said to you today, God loves you. Jesus died for you. You're his precious treasure and his precious stone. And he shed his blood to purchase you because you were a child of the devil. Thank you, Jesus. You were a child of Satan himself. And Jesus Christ says, listen, my people need to be redeemed. But they can't be redeemed with religion and tradition and church. They have to be redeemed through a blood transfusion. You get it, guys? Amen. You are your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. You had Satan's blood flowing through you. But then when you were born again, mm -hmm. you became a what? A new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. God has transcended you from being a child of the devil mm -hmm. to being a child of God. And how did he do it? He did it through blood. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that washes us. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that redeems us. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that saves us. Amen. It wasn't just his death. Mm. It was the blood of God that was poured out upon Calvary that redeems us. Because the Bible says all things by the law are purged by the blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There's no forgiveness. There would be no hope for this world apart from the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let's bow our heads forward and pray. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness, for your grace, and all that you've done. We thank you that Jesus Christ was willing to come and die and to purchase the church to buy us with his own blood. And Lord, we thank you that you blinded the nation of Israel and you hid your face from them for a moment's time so the fullness of the Gentiles could come in. Amen. Lord, we thank you for these mysteries that are clearly solved with the clues of the word of God by comparing scripture with scripture. Lord, if there's anyone here that the mystery of salvation has never been made clear to them, I pray that you make it clear that they would have eyes that they could see and ears that they could hear and a heart that is soft and tender towards your word. And Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Just thank you for everyone that's here this morning. We pray for the women that are up at the retreat, that your blessings will be upon them, that your grace will be upon them. We pray for your Christians, Lord, that you would encourage them to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, when it's all said and done, the only thing that will matter are the precious stones. The stones that will make it through the fire of your eternal judgment that comes upon this earth. When the earth and all the elements that are therein shall be burned up and the earth shall melt with a fervent heat. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are we to be? In holy conversation and godliness, looking and hastening unto the coming day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire. Lord, we just pray for your people that you'd help us to live with conviction and understanding. Lord, we thank you for all things that you do in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I'll have uh, Brian and Amen. Trisha come. Um, we will have a person invitation. Page 156 if you want to sing along. <laughs>